Welcome to the Free to Be Show. Self-nurturing is freedom. I am the multi-dimensional genius who birthed a book called Detached Love, transforming your heart so that you can transform your mind. Detachment is about freeing your soul to truly love in all its highest attributes. Over the next hour, I will share what it's like living and loving in detachment. To the Free to Be Show, I am the world's best joy monger. Yes, I made that word up. I'm here holding space for you to reveal your joy. I'm also the host of two podcasts, the author of eight books, and the mother of six children. Here on the Free to Be Show, this is your time to see in your mind and your heart whether or not you are truly free. So are you free? Let's see. So I am really excited to close the season with um, just a solo episode. You know, I thought often during the year about doing micro episodes and um, here and there I've done an IG live. And I thought it was most appropriate since I covered so many enriching topics during the season to close it out myself. So here I am going live and I'm my own guest. And what I thought would be a cool way to um, interview myself is to read from the me who wrote this book two years ago. Um, well, to be clear, it took me four years to write the book. So I actually published the book two years ago. Um, and so I've posted some links below this. <clears throat> I have the link to the book, which is, you know, how you can get a copy of a signed copy directly from my website. And I also have a link to my journal for those of you who may have purchased the book from Amazon or some other place. So, um, you know, the season in review this, this year, I started out um, with all things love beginning with self-love. So in January, I looked at what self-love is from the inside out and explored that conversation in different contexts with guests. <clears throat> and, um, and then in February, I looked at the outward of love, right? And, you know, defining boundaries and relationships. I had a really interesting conversation with the uh, three gentlemen from around the world about the power play of love and some other um, episodes uh, during the month of February. In March, I explored um, the, the theme for March was actually don't love your labels. And in this one, it was more about exploring our relationship with our belief systems and the labels that we attach within those different belief systems that create our values and really how we present in the world. And notice I'm saying present because the way we present may not necessarily be who we actually are. It's who we have been conditioned to be and you know why we choose to hold on to that conditioning sometimes and justify it, even though we may strongly judge and shame ourselves for the same. And so I had a very riveting conversation with two gentlemen, um, one who is currently my coach, Steve Bacon. And we talked about um, like how to uh, release toxic belief systems. And then in April, April actually was also the month of Ramadan for me. And I thought it would be great, you know, to, as 
a service to myself and my own belief systems to interview people from different faith backgrounds, you know, kind of have interfaith conversations about what it is to love as a believer. And so I entered, you know, I, I, I uh, interviewed, I don't, I would say that I have conversations on this show. I wouldn't say I have interviews really per se anymore. And with uh, Christians uh, who were from non-denominational backgrounds, Christians who are Catholic identifying, um, and with people who don't necessarily identify with a specific religion. And, and then I end it the month with uh, talking about business ethics with the two co-hosts of, um, of course, I forgot the name of their show, but um, Rabbi Yonason Goldson and Dr. Margarita Gori um, helped me to finish Loving as a Believer. And then in the month of May, you know, in celebration of mothers and all things motherhood, I, invite, I invited inspiring mothers, and I also had another panel of gentlemen, again, um, from, you know, two different uh, worldviews um, to talk about their relationship with their mother and how it's cultivated who they have become as men and uh, as coaches and, and business leaders. So now... When it came to the month of June, I had broadly decided that I was going to talk about loving and detachment, but you know, I, I plan almost a year ahead, and uh, I never know who I will be when the time comes to convey the message. And so the me that I am now I've actually been living and loving in detachment for the past six months, like truly to a different depth. And last week, you may have seen my episode with Zahra al -Jibri, and we were talking about pursuing marriage in detachment. And the striking thing about that, and even having her on my show, is a year ago, um, I finalized my divorce and I had been married for 20 years, you know, and the last four years as my marriage was disintegrating, I was writing Detached Love. And this uh, book came like, I believe it was uh, February of 2019. And I was pressuring myself to finish this book and complete this book. And I, you know, I couldn't do it for whatever reason. I, I was in this mode that people commonly refer to as stuck. And what I discovered is it's not that I was stuck. It was that I was still in the processing of what it is. And, uh, don't, you know, uh, let me just invite you to be part of this conversation. Like I said, I don't really have interviews on this show. These are conversations. So I welcome you to ask questions and put those in the comments as I speak. And, um, you know, thank you, Ekimini, for joining. And thank you for, um, your, your beautiful, kind words. You're a great woman. I, you know, we had such a beautiful conversation yesterday. And um, so it's not that I was stuck. It was there, need, there was a required pause to be with the momentum of events that were occurring in my life at that time. And and when I got to the point where I was able to release, right? Um, that and, and, and the interesting alignment to that and the events that were occurring in my life in July, I, I got to separate 
from my husband. And in that separation began my healing. It was so cathartic. I began writing. It was it was like the almost the last day of July when we separated. And that particular day, um, he is a native, well, you know, he's naturalized citizen, but he's originally from Bangladesh. And during our marriage, of course, I've learned a little bit of Bengali. So that particular day, I was supposed to present in an international forum speaking Bengali. And it was, um, it was difficult, really. I, I didn't, I, I didn't want to let the words leave my lips. Um, I can't even remember what it was I was sharing about. But um, this particular speaking event was, um, it was attended by over 100 people. And all that to say, in August, I just began writing and I wrote um, for the next five weeks and um, where I had been stuck at chapter four for four years, right? Um, or two years, I was able to just fluidly write the next six chapters and the chapter nine and 10 really surprised me as it came through. And, um, and then in that process, I was like, this is the book I've always wanted to write. And so I, I offered, I, I, I suggested that instead of just writing an introduction to the book and to the topic, that I should possibly have a, a foreword. And so I asked someone who, um, understood my work and who, even though they were new to me, had had a very enriching experience uh, to write the foreword. And that person is Devin Bandison. And so I, I did very few edits um, and I just left it the way it was. And it was a very powerful beginning to the book. You know, I, I wanted someone to introduce me to 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 you, the reader, and introduce the topic to you, the reader. And so, um, and then I, you know, go through the book. And I, I would say that it's, the book is only 150 pages and it has a companion journal. I've put both um, of those links in the comments. And this, uh, this book is, is a living document, right? It's a living document of how you live and how you love in detachment. And I'm gonna explain to you what that actually means. Sometimes we're in very difficult situations, whether it's work or an intimate relationship, a marriage, you know, uh, you know your profession, or maybe even with siblings and there comes a point where there's been so much poison in the relationship that it almost feels irreparable. And for me at that point, I chose to go within and really nurture the parts of me that needed to be held. And in that going within, I had to release the parts I was holding for the other person. And so this is where I moved into unconditional love. And that's the detachment where my love force was going back to the source, right? Uh, many people refer to the source as the universe or the oneness. And I find it interesting that many people love the term the oneness not understanding that when we say Allah as Muslims, we're also saying the oneness, like the only oneness that exists. You know, also, I think we say Samad, right? Samad, Samad is uh, like, there's, it's just the unique oneness. Anyway, so with me focusing on going within to nurture and hold parts for me, I 
was able to release and give unconditional love in the face of what most people would consider adversity um, with a smile that was genuine for that time. And now I have a different genuine smile because what I've learned in the, in the past two years is it's, you know, love is a frequency and it's a way of being. And higher than that, we have what's called joy. And so this is what I decided to lean into, the frequency of joy. We are created this way. This is who we are. And in order to truly tune into that, you have to free yourself and open up completely. So I'm going to share with you um, right out of the book. I In chapter six, for those of you who have this book, just grab it and you can read along with me. But on page 79, I decode detachment in a really brief poem. And so I say, love is multidimensional. It's the lift in your chest as you breathe, the pause in your day, even when it's been less than sensational. It's the choice you make with each hello. The gift of elevation and presence rendering you inspirational. It is the yes and mostly your no. Hello, Natalie. Thank you for joining. So that understanding of being multidimensional, love is a frequency, which is multidimensional. And um, if you're listening to this, right, it's the lift in your chest as you breathe. So when, when you when you think of, when you feel into the frequency of love, you can feel the depth, not the weight, but the lightness and the levity of it. And that is you being interdimensional. And that is you shifting into your true beingness without attachment to anything. It is the pause in your day even when it's been less than sensational, right? Because in our bodies, the purpose of our bodies is to feel sensation. And sometimes we don't want to feel those sensations. How many times have you chosen to suppress your emotions or um, not feel your emotions at all? I know I've done that. You know, it's the choice you make with each hello, right? So every time you speak to someone, when you, you can choose to make eye contact, right? And my maternal, well, actually both my grandmothers are Native Americans. So they, you know, but my, the one that I was raised with, she would tell me, you know, to look into the, um, people's eyes to to know their souls. And so when I say hello, I look people in the eye and connect with their soul, right? And that is being detached from it making anything mean anything there. It's just simply connecting soul to soul. The gift of elevation, right? Because when you connect at the soul level, we don't, um, we we are allowed to ascend above any um, human desires. We are in a different realm completely, and and presence rendering you inspirational, right? And in that space. Sometimes when you're connecting soul to soul, people feel inspired, right? It, it 
it helps them to remember it's okay to go with it. It's okay to be me. And it can be yes and mostly your no. So sometimes we'll know. I'm going to I'm going to phrase it like this because it's more it's simple. The yes is the yes to your soul only always. The no is to everyone else for the purpose of your inner peace and setting of your boundaries. So this is what it is to love in detachment and live in detachment. So now I'm going to take a short commercial break um, as you process the words that I just shared with you. And when I come back, I'm going to read another poem in the book. Um, and, and this actually was really the beginning of me um, re reuniting my or reigniting my love of writing poetry. So um, I'll be right back with that. Are you owning the true leader you are? Staying in the continuous flow of curiosity, presence, gratitude, and joy? Opening the door to the energetic flow of reciprocity and guess the benefits, financial opportunities, gifts, compassion, gratitude, love, joy, a healthy body, mind, and soul, and abundance. Are you ready to create, create better in 2023? Great! Beginning on July 7th, I'm starting the Joy and Presence group. This is only for serious women who desire to create and live into a better future, a world filled with everything you've ever imagined and so much more. Sign up for your Joy to Connect session and create a better 2023. Yes, no need to adjust your screen. You are seeing me without hijab. And it doesn't mean that I've left Islam or I'm no longer Muslim. It just simply means that I'm sharing the rest of who I truly am. So this poem is called, Who Are You Really? Are you the person you think you are? How did you become the way you are now? This is a self-reflection piece, a new direction reach. In the moment, you let it go or pass it until next time. But why? Who are you really? Are you that silly little girl who loved to play and was shut down? Are you the frolic frolicking young professional all over town? Now that you have matured, in air quotes, would you have, who have you come to be? Did you make did you make you or did they make you see that the you that you are is not worthy? Did you choose to run and swerve into here? The here that is neither here nor there. The here that it has you running everywhere and still you neither know or see the you that is really you or the one you wish to be. So who are you really? Have you any idea? Has it crossed your mind lately? Have you given up who you are innately? For a shell of who you, are, who you could be, would, would you be greatly surprised to find you again just by taking a moment to pour back within rather than to run your knuckles bare and your heart to despair? Are you open to repair the damage before it's insurmountable? Or are you already there? Who are you really? Willing to share and be part of your healing? 
dealing with all the things that aren't even yours just makes life to be one huge list of chores. What if you could work and, re and reframe and retrain your heart, transform your brain, replenish yourself and begin again? Would you, could you be willing to try? It is easy. It is easy as pie. Starting to feel jiggly inside? Are you ready to say, I am open and no longer willing to hide? So, what I mean to say is what it is to live and love and detachment is the detaching of all the mask that we wear. And in my case, the mask that I chose to wear was um, to hide, right? I, I love being Muslim. And one of the things I love the most, right, is that I, could, I never had a bad hair day because you never saw my hair. I had on a hijab. And, um, but it was a choice. It was really a choice. Yes, I, I agree with the concept of hijab and it no longer serves me. Um, one of the things that I really, really wanted to do for many, many years was to lock my hair. And um, that wasn't something that was acceptable. Um, at the time. Uh, and so the first thing I did when I no longer had to or felt that I needed to please is I chose to nurture me. What is it that I truly desire to create for me? And, and for that, it was to lock my hair. And, you know, it's not to say that I'll never wear hijab again. It's, you know, next season i may next tomorrow i may when i go to the grocery store in a couple of minutes i may but for now you know it's freeing for me to know that all is for the elevation of my soul and so i encourage all of you who are listening um because you can't see physically the transformation that i just made right I um, I remove my hijab after or during the commercial break, and I'm now sitting and talking without it. And in this moment, I've freed myself, right, um, from what it may mean to some who watch, because. Every anything can only mean what you make it mean. And that's where the detachment begins. Does it have to mean something? It doesn't. It's a choice in every moment, in every interaction, in every breath. We have a choice to choose whether or not something means something we can we can choose whether it aligns with our values or not we can choose other people's values to be our own and i'm here to tell you on june 14th a month before my 50th birthday i'm free to be me in every moment in every breath in every interaction and to to free m myself of mask to free myself of um conditioning and i am a work in progress and while i'm working on me i invite others to work with me so that they can choose to be free to be as well. And so that's why I talk about being the, the world's best joy monger, 
Because like I said at the beginning of the show, joy is a frequency and we have access to it every single day because this is our bliss center. Even though we're told that we, uh, we don't live in bliss and things, um, we, we're always driven by fear. We're conditioned by fear. We don't have to choose to live in fear. And when, the reason why I say joy monger, right? Because mongering is to incite uh, a certain feeling, right? There's fear mongering. We've been fear mongered for the past two years with COVID. I'm not saying that COVID does not exist. It's been on the planet as long as there's been people, right? That's what the Black Plague was in the Middle Ages. And Alhamdulillah for Islam, because the Muslim doctors had created something called quarantine um, so that people knew how to um, stop the spread of COVID, right? Which was called the Black Plague back then and has evolved in many iterations over humanity. And so now it's, you know, it's been used to create fear and and i and the antidote for fear is to have joy so i'm sharing joy with you and encouraging you to choose that frequency every day and every breath and detach from your conditioning detach from your mask you no longer have to um show up as somebody else and yes it's a process little by little you can begin to to live that way and the the living is the loving it's the loving of your soul it's the loving of the elevation process the purification process that comes with what we perceive as hardships, which I call, I, I actually think I created a quote in the group in the book that says something like, um, I have gratitude for the opportunities of, of um, blessings, you know, so like, in other words, every time something happened, or someone said something that that didn't make me feel good, right, in my heart and affected me physically. I would be grateful for that experience because now I learned something I didn't know about me through that experience. And I'm grateful because that is a blessing for me. Many things are happening in that experience. It's an opportunity to explore more of who I am and it is also an opportunity to, um, to learn more about the way people think. And, and then, of course, there's the lesson, right? So there's so many opportunities and revelations that happen when we go through uh, things that we don't think are great. And we can choose our thoughts, right? You don't have to think anything. Back to the you don't have to make it mean anything. You can just choose to say, this is replenishing for me. I'm, I choose to take a pause for the cause of me. I choose to, in this moment, not react, not respond, but to breathe. I choose to, to, uh, to be in my body or I choose to remove myself from a situation. But whatever it is, you choose. And that is the most powerful thing about living and loving and detachment. So again, for those of you who watch this on the replay, I invite you to put your questions and comments in the... Um, below this video 
And for those of you who are not watching us, who may listen to it on, you know, Apple podcast or Google Play or something like this, I invite you to write me an email at hello, hello at cordeliagafar.com and share your insights or your questions about what is it that I'm talking about when I say detachment. So there is a part in the book also where I actually break it down word by word. I'm not going to read that part. And I do invite you to get the workbook at the minimum so that you can work through the exercises and understand um, categorically how to nurture and detach. Um, and it requires curiosity. Be curious with yourself. Be curious with your journey. You know, I next week actually will be going to Hawaii holding the Hawaii Replenish Me Retreat and holding space for five souls so that they can have this deep transformative detachment from who they've been and step into who they be truly within at the soul level. And so when I got to the word, uh, when I got to the letter M for detachment, I chose mitochondria because mitochondria, it, these are the powerhouses of our essential cells in our bodies. And when you detach, you become the mitochondria for your soul, the actual powerhouse to, um, to live and love as you choose. So with that, I close the season of the Free to Be Show, season four. I will be on more platforms and doing more collaborations. If you would like to be a guest, reach out to me and um, I will consider as I'm in the planning phases for how I plan to show up in the future with the Free to Be Show. Um, and I always invite you to question, are you free in the way you think? What judgments came to your mind as you watched this or as you listened to this? What judgments, not of me, but of yourself? And if you had judgments of me, know that what we think and feel and say has more to do with us than it ever has to do with the other person. So if you think that you're thinking that you have judgments about me, you're actually having perceptions and projections about yourself and projecting that onto me or whoever it is that you're speaking to or thinking of. So I invite you to examine that and um, give yourself more grace. Give yourself more opportunities for love and, and give yourself more nurturing because self-nurturing is what helps you to be free. And self-nurturing is the biggest and best act of worship. For those of you who ascribe to a religion, whatever that is, when you nurture yourself, you're taking care of the temple, right? This vessel that we're gifted for a few decades. And you are also acknowledging and celebrating the creation of your being. So don't miss the opportunity to go within and nurture your multi, your multitude of dimensions. You are not just a soul, a mind, and a spirit. You're so much deeper. You are in a continuum. And to center yourself, just be only in the moment of now. And 
believe it or not, that's what gives you kushu or presence. And that's what allows you to detach from conditioning. And if you would like help with that, I'm here to support you. And until next season, which will begin most likely at the end of September, be free. Thank you for joining the conversation. Now take the time to reflect, introspect, and implement at least one action. Be in your body, be in your soul, be in your spirit. You know, be free. Until next week.